Hey guys, it's Star the Flippin' Hippo. Thank you for joining us on our YouTube channel at Flippin' Hippos. Today we're going to talk about how to get faster at listing, how to list more items per hour. Um, before I get into um, my tips and tricks on how to list faster, I just want to quickly touch upon um, holding yourself accountable to attainable goals. So I think across the board, most resellers hold themselves accountable to a goal of 10 per hour. Um, I've seen a lot of discussions about that. I've seen a lot of resellers say that. So I feel like 10 per hour is pretty much the average goal that every reseller strives for. Um, but it's not realistic for everyone. And the reason I want to talk about this is because when you set unattainable goals for yourself, goals that aren't realistic, you're never going to reach them and you're, the end result is you're going to be discouraged and you're never going to feel accomplished. So when you set goals for yourself, you want to choose goals that are a challenge. You don't want them to be too easy. You want them to be challenging, but you want them to be realistic. So if 10 per hour is not realistic for you, you shouldn't be striving for that um, because you're just going to discourage yourself and you're never going to get that awesome uh, feeling of accomplishment when you reach a goal. And there's a lot of reasons why 10 per hour may not be realistic for a lot of people. Uh, new resellers, when you're first starting out, you're not going to have the ability to do 10 per hour. You're still learning how to do measurements. You're still probably slow. It, and none of this is bad. Like I'm not, I'm not saying any of this is bad. I was a slow turtle when I first started, guys. It was like watching me measure clothes and take photographs and try to do listings in the very beginning was like watching a snail race in molasses. Um, so I'm not like saying this to bring anybody down or say anything bad. But when you're new, you're slow. You're slow at measurements, you're new maybe to measurements, so you're slow. Um, you're still learning the brands and the prices and how to comp and it's going to take you a little bit longer to find comps and find brands and um, it's just you're slow in the beginning. I mean there's no, there's no nice way to put it but we all were. When we all started out we were all snails. So if you're brand new and you are still learning how to take measurements and how to take photos, um, you aren't going to be fast. And holding yourself accountable to 10 an hour isn't a good thing. So, you know, one the one reason might be that you're new. It could be whatever you're doing, whatever items you're listing aren't realistic, realistic items that you can do 10 an hour. Um, there's a lot of reasons why it may not be. If it is, I mean, 10 an hour is a good goal to have. Don't get me wrong, 10 or more an hour would be great. But be realistic and hold yourself accountable to goals that are going to be realistic for you so that you can feel accomplished and you don't just feel discouraged all the time. And don't compare yourself to other resellers, especially new ones. If you're a new reseller, don't compare yourself to me. Don't compare yourself to Casey the Rockstar Flipper or um, any of these other resellers you see doing 10, 15, 20 an hour. Because veteran sellers have been doing this for a while and they're they're faster and they don't their goals aren't going to be your goals. You should really not compare yourself to anybody but yourself. When you want to compete or challenge, challenge yourself. Compete with yourself. Don't compare yourself to others. Um, just every day, try to do better than you did yesterday. Every day, try to list more than you did yesterday. Try to beat your own high scores. Try to beat your own records. And just compete with yourself and be the best you that you can be. And don't compare yourself to others. Okay, so now let me get off my soapbox. And um, I just... I don't know. I just don't like it when people are discouraged because they can't quite reach a goal. And then you look at the goal and you're like, well, that's not even attainable for you. Why don't we start with five an hour and when you get there, eight, 
you know, so that you can keep accomplishing goals and feeling good about yourself. So I'm off the soapbox. So here's my tips on how to get faster. Number one is repetition. The longer you do something, the more often you do it over and over and over again, the faster you're going to get. This just comes natural. The repetition part of um, listing comes natural. The longer you do it, the longer you've been in the reselling game, the more often you do jeans, the more often you do video games or whatever you list, you're going to get faster with time. That's just, it's a natural way to speed up. So you can't, this isn't a tip per se, um, but repetition over time, um, doing the same thing over and over again, you will get faster. And that's why a lot of resellers think it's so important to find a niche. Um, because if you just do jeans all the time, you're going to get fast. If you're all over the place listing a bunch of stuff, you're not getting as much repetition to speed up the process. Um, but that's up to you. I, I don't really have a niche. I list, I mean, if I think I can flip it and make a buck, I'm going to flip it and make a buck. So, um, You want to list or work on all the same type of an item and you want to be doing the same task with these items. What I mean by this is you don't want to bring a pile over that has jeans in it and women's shirts and men's shirts um, and some hard goods because that's going to slow you way down. You want to work on all the same things. So you want to bring a pile of jeans or a stack of video games or a bag of plushies that you want to work on that day. But you want to work on all the same type of item um, at once so you're just doing the same thing with these items and it's going to go faster. And then you want to be doing the same task. So you don't want to bring over a stack of say blue jeans and take one pair off of the stack and measure them photograph them and list them. That's just going to slow you down. You want to do things in batches. So bring over your stack of jeans, measure every pair, photograph every pair, and then list them. Um, and as far as doing all the measurements at once, a uh, way to keep track of that is you could write down in a book. I know some resellers write down in a book or like on a scratch paper. Um, their measurements as they go and then they'll have that next to them when they list. What I do is I just take a scratch piece of paper, I keep the receipts from the post office every day and I use them as scratch paper for many different things. Just use the backs of them. Um, and so I write my measurements on that and then I get a picture of the measurement next to the tag of the um, pants or jeans that I'm working on. And so when I'm listing, I have all my photos in a folder on my computer. I can see the, the uh, American Eagle Artist 6, I can see the tag, and then I know to look at that for my measurements. That requires opening a picture and kind of flipping back and forth. So that's probably not the fastest way, but it's the fastest way as I'm going and doing the measurements to keep track of them. I'm just shooting a quick picture. Um, and then when I'm listing, I do have to, like I said, flip back and forth. But I feel like that, for me, is faster than writing them down by hand. I used to write them down by hand. I used to keep a notebook and do that. But anyway, um, you want to get all of one thing, one type, and do all of your tasks in batches. So you want to bring over just shirts, just pants, whatever you're working on. Get all your prep done on them if that includes measurements or whatever, get all your photographs and then list. Um, you want to stay focused when you list. You want to avoid distractions. And I know that's difficult for a lot of us with families or kids, especially young kids who don't go to school. Um, we're all busy. We all have families. We all have distractions. Just do your best. Like maybe if you have a small baby or a toddler in the house, you can um, break your day up and work around their nap times. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can avoid distractions. Um, you just want to stay focused. When you're focused on something, you're going to go faster. Um, I recommend using timers. You guys hear me say that all the time. I use timers for everything um, so I can stay focused. I know that for this one hour, I am measuring this stack of jeans. And then for an hour, I'm photographing them and then for two hours I'm listing. So 
Also, the timers, they let you see your growth. It's really neat. So if you use timers over time, you can actually subjectively see how fast you're getting. I used to bring over 15 pairs of jeans, and it would take me my full hour to measure them, and then my full hour to photograph them. Then it got to where I was running out, so then I got to where I was doing 20. And in the last couple weeks or so, I've started bringing 25 over, and sometimes I still have extra time at the end of my hour, and I go grab another two to five pairs of pants, depending on how much time is left on the timer. So I can subjectively say that since April of 2018 until April of 2019, I've gone from being able to measure 15 pairs of jeans in an hour to 25 plus, and it's it's great. So if you use timers, um, you can actually see your growth because you know how many you're doing in the set amount of time. Um, this one's a big one. Stop wasting so much time on research. I don't know how many times I've seen posts in the groups with people wondering if something is real. Is it fake? Has anybody ever seen this label before? Has anybody ever seen this style or this brand? You're wasting time. You don't really need to do that much research on your items. If it's not a really super expensive flip or item, don't waste so much time on it, on researching it. If it's going to be a $500 dress, you probably want to make sure it's authentic and you want to research and make sure that's the right comp. But if you're doing a stack of Lucky Brand jeans, as long as they look authentic and there's ways to tell, um, I wouldn't take pictures of them and put them in the groups and ask. And I mean, it's I understand that when you're new, you're nervous and you want to make sure that everything's authentic and nothing is fake, that you want to make sure that, oh, this tag looks different than the other tags I've seen in this brand. I understand that. And in the beginning, you give you have total leeway to do stuff like that. But after a while, you need to stop wasting your time on the research and just list. And that goes for comping as well. When you're comping an item, just go to the salts on eBay and look. Um, search for that brand, that size, that style, maybe that color, and just look through the solds, what's sold. Make sure that you're filtering um, new, ended, newest, or whatever it is, ended, soonest, so that you see what they're selling for today. You, that's important. Make sure you use that filter. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like ended, soonest. It's so you can see what's sold most recently. Um, and it will show you like what sold today and yesterday. That is so important because, um, say, this shirt three months ago, the comps could have been $25. And now they're only $20. So you want to definitely make sure you're doing that so you see what stuff is worth today. Um, but And you don't have to find the exact item. Like, if you have a shirt... You don't need to find that same exact shirt, size, style, whatever, to comp it. Find similar. Find, if you have a Talbot's button front and it's striped and it's pink, find similar. You don't have to find the same exact shirt. I know a lot of people waste time on that. Just find similar. And, you know, look for something similar, definitely, because color can make a difference. Um, Jamie Pace will tell you that ties, red ties are worth more money than blue ties in certain instances. So yeah, just type in, you know, what it is, your brand and, and your style, and find something similar. But you don't need to kill yourself in researching and um, looking for comps. And then eventually you're going to get confident enough in yourself that you can comp off of yourself. If you're listing, if you're listing a lot of the same things over and over again, the same brands or the same VCRs or the same video games, eventually you're going to know up here, it's back to the repetition thing when you do the same thing over and over, you're going to know up here what those comp for. Or you can just go through your own store and see what you are asking for these items because you know you just comped them last week or whatever. So when you get confident enough, you can't comp off yourself. And I will be quite honest with you, I comp off of myself more often than I comp 
off of a eBay search. Um, if I have something that I'm listing, I look in my store, and if I have something like that, I use the last price I used. Um, the only time I'm doing an eBay search for comps is when it's a brand I've never sold before, and it's new to me. The only thing you want to be careful of when you get to the point where you can comp off of yourself, you want to recheck your prices every two to three months because prices can change over time. Um, that goes back to why I said it's so important to use the ended soonest filter. Um, prices change. There's the race to the bottom. Sometimes something happens in pop culture or in the world that makes an item worth more money. There's all kinds of reasons why the price can go down or up. So, um, I mean, like the best example I can give you is I list American Eagle and Gap jeans consistently all the time. Um, and I know what price I start them at. But every two months or so when I'm listing jeans, I just do a quick eBay search and search the solds and see have they gone up, have they gone down, and price mine accordingly. I don't go back and change my old ones. I just move forward and price accordingly. Um, and that's just because we deal in volume. I can't be changing 1900 things. I can I can touch them when they come to the unsolds. I typically lower the price by 5%. So that um, will catch up eventually if the price is lowered, if that makes sense. Um, templates. You guys want to be using templates. Oh my gosh, are they a time saver. So if you list on the computer, you can set up templates in eBay to use. And I actually made a video about that, so I'll link that down below for you. Um, and if you list on the phone, you maybe want to make your drafts on the computer and then go on the phone and upload your photos. But if you want to list on the phone um, completely, you can, um, uh, you really can't have like a template per se, but like Keith has on his phone um, in a notepad app thingy, the part we put in the description for our, our items in the store, and he just copy, copy pastes that in. Um, I'm not a big fan of listing on the phone, I use the computer. And the templates are a huge time saver. You can go in and pre-fill so much information and then just add like the brand and the price when you're listing. Um, and also when you use templates, you can have that meta tag to make your listing mobile friendly already in the HTML section on your template. So when you list something from that template, it's already mobile friendly and you don't have to use the mobile friendly checker or go back in later to add that HTML code in for the meta tag. So you can set your templates up to already be mobile friendly and you never have to worry about it. I do have a video on that as well. I will link all of that below. How to share, I have a video on showing you how to set up templates one on how to put the meta tag in your templates, bulk edit with um, the meta tag. I'll link all that down below so you guys can have access to that if you need it. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely use templates. And if you use the phone, have something that you can copy paste in. It just saves so much time. Um, you can just keep going and going and going and going like really quick when you're going through your listings. Um, and I guess the last tip I have for you is to throw perfection out the door. You want good photos, they don't gotta be perfect. You want good listings, they don't gotta be perfect, guys. You don't have to spend 10 minutes stressing over your title. Like, follow the, uh, the formula for titles that is recommended. I have a video for that too. I'll put that down below for you guys. Um, but there is a recommended formula. Follow that, throw in great keywords, and you're done. You don't have to be perfect. Your photographs have to look nice, so you want a nice setup like we have back here. You want good lighting. But you don't have to strive to have everything absolutely 100% perfect. You want them great, but not perfect. And no one's perfect. We're all human, so nothing we ever do in our lives is going to be perfect. So um, strive to be awesome, strive to be amazing, strive to be the best you can be, but don't worry about being perfect. And don't take so much time, don't stress about it. Just be great, be good, and don't worry about being perfect. Um, so those are my tips on how to get faster. I just wanna add in, um, again, to make sure that the goals you're setting for yourself are realistic. 
that they are, are attainable for you. Don't make them too easy, make them challenging, um, but make sure they're realistic. And if, you're, if you set a goal and you find that you're consistently not reaching it, it's probably not a realistic goal for you, so lower it. You're not lowering your standards, you're just saying, I can't, I can't possibly do 20 listings in an hour, let me try for 10. And then when you reach your goals, you can raise them. Um, you want to keep track of how much you're listing a day, how many photos you're getting a day, not not like for, like how many photos all together, but like how many items you photograph. Um, so just keep track however you want. A lot of people keep like um, spreadsheets on their computer. Some people keep track on apps on their phone. I am old school, so this is what I do. Um, you guys see it? I don't know if you can see it. Um, I keep those little tally marks when I'm listing. And I keep, I write the whole week out. You can see on Friday I was not at all, <laughs> I was not at all productive on Friday. That was a bummer. But you can see on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of last week I reached 20. Um, I list for two hours a day. And then Thursday I only had 17, which means that on Thursday I probably had a lot of items I wasn't familiar with, um, new to me brands and stuff that I was having to comp um, and look up so I was a little bit slower and then Friday, well Friday was just <laughs> when you get into that. Um, but yeah, I keep, tra I keep something like this all week and then I transfer this to my bullet journal because um, I like to write everything out by hand. I'm very old fashioned and I like keeping a journal. Um, but yeah, just keep track of how much you're doing every day so that you can see if you're reaching your goals. Hold yourself accountable. If you need someone else to hold you accountable, that's fine. Accountability is so important when you work from home and you're your own boss. You don't have a time clock. You don't have to clock in. You don't have to be to work on time. You're not going to get fired if you sleep in. You're not going to get fired if you show up late. And there's no one breathing down your back yelling at you or whatever bosses do. Um, so you have to really, really boss yourself. You have to be your own boss. And accountability is so important. So if you need an accountability partner, there's no shame in that. I mean, get find someone that you report to every day in Facebook Messenger or direct messaging on Instagram. Find a partner, share your goals, report to each other, and then hold each other accountable. Um, the best way to hold yourself accountable is to be public about your goals. So, I mean, this is the this is the biggest one. Like, if someone's going to quit smoking and they just tell themselves that and they don't tell any of their friends or anything and they don't quit smoking, that's okay because no one knew they were going to try. So then they can just keep smoking and no one knows. But if they make, like, a big announcement to the world and to their friends and their family that, hey, as of May 1st, I'm going to quit smoking, they are now accountable. So one of the best ways to keep yourself accountable is to announce to the world what you're going to do. So go on your Instagram, go on your Facebook groups and say, this week I want to photograph every day 15 items, whatever your goal is, and I'm going to list this many each day. And there you go. You've now announced it to the world, so there's no hiding from it. Um, I think that is all I have to say. So... If you guys have any tips or tricks on how to list faster or get, you know, more listings up in an hour that I may have missed on my list, go ahead and leave me comments down below. Let me know um, what you do to, to list faster, what you do to get more up an hour. Um, if you have anything else you want to say or whatever, go ahead and leave me comments. Um, I do answer each and every one, and I love to read them. Uh, do me a favor and smash that like button down below um, or dislike whatever if you didn't like the video you didn't like it but you can smash the dislike button for me because that helps too um, if you haven't already and you would like to please subscribe to our channel and help us feed a hungry hippo you can find us on Instagram Twitter and Facebook we are at flipping hippos until next time you guys have a good night